Glimmer of hope. But I don't know how to Items are here.
I haven't been serving long enough to die. Thanks. Snacks for patrol, again. Inhibitor container detected.
Hey! Were you hitting on me, buddy? <laughs> Not at all. Although... Ah, no, something else. You see what life has done to you? Even your reaction to the word fun proves it. Entertainment? What's that? Playing a guitar? Talking around a campfire? Drinking till you drop? Nobody knows how to party anymore. And people need to unfucking wind Otherwise, the stress is gonna kill you. So, what did I do? I created this great game. Ultimate, because it's one and only and bestest. Fury, because it's fueled by emotion. And the last part, wait for it, cricket. Ultimate Fury Cricket. Cricket. Yeah. Used to be a sport where you hit a ball with a bat. In my game, instead of the ball, you have... Infected. And what's new about fighting the infected? What's new is that you just make pure fun out of it. How about that? No jobs, people trying to get you to rescue them, no clearing out buildings. You just get out there and take your frustrations out on the fuckers. Wasn't that what certain sports like boxing were always about? So if you feel like it, just step into the arena and pick up the mace. Oh, and by the way, you can earn cash money. Just promise me one thing, bro. Stay away from my brother, Ron. He's a fraud and a bore. He, he tells everyone he came up with Ultimate Fury Cricket, but it was me. Law and order. Ain't no other way to save us. Yeah. <laughs> 
beekeeper or a brewer? I'm both. That's the secret of my double bark. You must have noticed most beer in this town tastes like piss. Well, you're not wrong. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Nobody cares about taste anymore. Does that surprise you? The truth is, so-called brewers nowadays are damn amateurs. <laughs> and you're a pro, I gather. You bet. And it's an excellent time for my trade. Demand for beer is higher than ever. Brewers are in the top ten most stable jobs in this city. Right after the Undertakers? <laughs> right. <laughs> nice one. As for me, I'm dedicated to nurturing my yeast. And my bees. Your bees? Yup. You know what the secret ingredient is to brewing the best beer in town? Besides love, of course. I'm guessing you're about to tell me. Honey. And to harvest the best kind of honey, you need the best fed bees. Speaking of which, maybe you could help me with my bees. Feed them some sugar? I have my own special beehives in the area. Put them up high to keep them out of reach of those who steal my honey. I can try. Where exactly are these beehives? First, you need to find the bags of sugar I've left nearby to feed them. If you find the bags, you'll find the beehives. There are three of them all close to each other. The first one is on a rooftop just nearby. If you look towards the main terminal, you can see it from here. The second is on the rooftop of the main terminal building, below this big tower covered with a peacekeeper's banner. And the third one is on the top of the main terminal station, just beside one of the statues. Please do it quickly. Business is so brisk I've neglected them lately. Oh, they're probably starving. I guess I'm more of a brewer than a beekeeper after all. Oh, a bag of sugar. I can save Barack's bees from starvation. Yeah. 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 
another bag of sugar for Barack's hungry critters. Third bag of sugar. That should take the sting out. <laughs> uh, mission almost complete.
<sighs> Done. Your bees are gonna live. Fantastic news! Thank you. Here's a souvenir for your effort. And if you're ever in the neighborhood again, you could still help me. My bees have voracious appetites. You got a problem? A problem? Pilgrim, you gotta help me. I'm in deep shit. Real fucking deep. If you don't help me, that bald thug, my uncle, will beat me. And he's got hands like cast iron frying pans. The last time he hit me, I had a lump on my forehead as big as a horn. Uh, like some fucking rhino. And it came in rainbow colors too. The horn, I mean. What did you do to make your uncle angry this time? Nothing yet. But I will in a moment. Like any normal person, I took a nap and then boom! I was asleep like a frog in a swamp in winter. The worst part is that the sausage is on the verge of rotting. In this day and age, throwing away good food is a crime. Okay, nearly good food. But it won't give you the shits quite yet. If it's eaten in the next hour, everyone will be fine. Okay. Maybe one of them will run to the bathroom. Better than starving. After all, no one has shit so much they stop being hungry, right? But in three hours, everyone's asses will explode like shit geezers. Then comes the puking. My uncle will just fucking kill me, and the rest will feed my corpse to the infected. I'd hurry this food over to them myself, but I still have to prepare the smoker. This stuff doesn't make it. Well, you know what will happen. Show me where to go. Jesus, you can't even imagine how important this is to me. Just grab the food rations on the table and hurry up to deliver them.
You are awesome. I know you made it in time too. I met one guy who ate a sausage sandwich and he was fine. He even called it tasty. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Got some spare time? Because if you do, because I got another sausage run to prevent the runs. And you, you already know where to go. This isn't an urgent race like the last one, but in this weather, you have to be careful with food. The faster it lands in someone's stomach, the better for everyone. a break here I see all these miserable faces and I think nobody loves themselves anymore nobody ever again that sounds a bit extreme well you think so what do you think is the first step in loving yourself Matt, are, are you some kind of spiritual guru trying to recruit me <laughs> oh no please I'm very down to earth Hanging around near the metro station in considerable safety and all. But I used to be a florist down in Trinity. I had a shop there, the Blooming Tulip, near the bazaar, when it was still the Church of the Holy Trinity. I was raised in an orphanage among a multitude of apathetic people. <laughs> Maybe that's why I turned to flowers. But after the outbreak, people stopped buying them. Uh, that's understandable. Certainly, but... Uh, there was this old lady. I basically kept the store open just for her. She'd come every day, as if nothing had changed. Her visits were the highlight of my day, until one day she didn't show. What happened to her? Her flowers ate her alive. How should I know? I was growing these special pink roses for her. It was her last order. And I simply couldn't throw them all away. So I kept one of the roses and dried it. Just for her. She'd be delighted to know that you never forgot her. Yeah. If only I could get that rose to her. Could you take it? She never said where she lived precisely, but I asked her once where she kept all her flowers. She said, in a beautiful house made of glass where the old mound used to be. Here, take the rose. Please find the house and give it to her, if she's still there.
A house made of glass. Reminds me of that flower lady. Hmm. Maybe I should check it out. Farewell, flower lady. So this is her story. I understand now why she went to his flower shop every day. Her son should know that he was loved. is our greatest enemy. He's responsible for the Black Monday bombings and the death of two million people. Is it always flat? No, no. It'll stop soon. Oh. Yeah, I found her. I'm afraid she... She had passed away. She was with her flowers. So... She died in peace. She did, yes. She wrote a letter and actually mentioned you. She did? Yes. Here. I think you should read it. This old lady was... my mother? So many times as a kid, I imagined how she'd look. I'd see other kids at the park with their mothers, and... I'd have this knot in my stomach. Feeling I could never see mine. Knowing I could never hold her hand thinking she never even cared, when in fact, she did care. I did see her every day for years. I never expected that she... <sighs> Maybe this is why I couldn't throw away her flowers. Thank you, Aiden. Love isn't dead after all. I'm, uh... I'm going to need some time alone now. <laughs> Thank you for giving her the rose. I'll uh, see you around, Aiden. This is starting to make us look bad. plus 82, 108 steps, plus the length of... Are you okay there? Oh, damn it. You made me lose count. Once more. The bag's there. 13 steps from the entrance. 27... Wait, uh, two infected ran in at that point. 
damn it. I'll never find it again. Find what? My father's CD. The future of mankind depends on it. The future of mankind? Mm-hmm. That's what my father says. Stellan Borg, a professor of cosmology here at the university. Heard of him? He wrote a famous paper, The Cosmology of Virology. Some next-level thinking. So what's on the CD? No idea. My father left it in a backpack. A bag. I don't know. I haven't checked everything. I was 13 paces from the apartment when two infected burst in. No, wait. Three. Do you want me to help you? Would you? Because I... I couldn't even... I, I mean, I could try. But three infected is too many. They'd kill me. Yeah, probably. Right, so here's the deal. The CD is in my father's bag, or a backpack. And the bag or backpack is in our apartment at 116 Bell Tower Road. That's west off of Horseshoe, close to Meatpacking Square. And remember, the fate of the human race may rest on you retrieving that CD. Father will pay you, uh, of course, when you bring him the CD. He'll be waiting outside the church. I got it. Oh, and here's a tip. Wait till dusk. That's when they leave. They're packed in there during the day. Five in the hall, then two up the stairs. No, three.
Whatever's on you better be worth it. But when the commander is killed, they turn the place around. Right to the fire. Is that why it smells so bad? Stone? That depends. What do you want? Your son sent me. You've got the CD? Yeah. And your son's doing good, if you were wondering. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the disc. What's all this about the CD containing the fate of mankind? If I may be frank, this may very well be mankind's only salvation. People burn books to keep themselves warm at night. They use oil canvases to patch holes in roofs. And in Gothic cathedrals, they sell tomatoes. They don't understand that no man lasts forever, contrary to art. That's it. Do you hear? And now, this transition. Quite so. Is your soul not stirred? 